In today's video, I'll share with you how to adjust the valve lash on solid valve lifters, and I'll also explain to you how you can figure out the top dead center of each piston within your engine. The first thing you want to do to access your valve lifters is to remove the valve cover. You might have a breather cube or a dipstick hooked up to it, so just remove all that with the gasket and you should have access to your valve lifters. My valve cover is right down there and the rock arm assembly has been fully exposed. We have exactly two push rods for each cylinder. This right here happens to be a three cylinder engine. You can have a four cylinder engine, a six cylinder, or even an eight cylinder engine with this setup. Um, if everything inside of the valve cover looks just like this, then you have a solid valve lifter assembly. We have for a solid valve lifter assembly, these adjustment screws, which will have a flat head cutout in them. And we also have a nut, which will tighten everything to our rocker arm. Right now, I have everything loose on the first cylinder, which is closest to the flywheel. And you will notice the rocker arms are loose. Nothing has been adjusted yet, because I will share with you guys how to adjust the valve lash on cylinder one. And you will have the exact same setup for cylinder two and cylinder three. If your engine at home has more cylinders, then you just have to do it a couple more times. The first thing I have to do before I adjust the valve lash is I have to figure out where top dead center is on cylinder number one. To do that, I'll share with you two methods. Method number one will be to focus on cylinder number one and specifically the push rods of cylinder number one. When I give you guys a close up view on these two push rods, they will lift up and they will push on each valve. Our exhaust valve is closer to the right and you will notice that because the exhaust valve is in line with our exhaust port right here. The intake valve is actually in line with our intake port, which is right here. So you will understand that the intake push rod is off to the left and the exhaust push rod is off to the right. That is very important to understand. So I shared with you guys each push rod and now I can grab the flywheel and turn it counterclockwise. This engine does spin counterclockwise on the flywheel, but it does rotate clockwise on the crankshaft pulley on the opposite side. So as I spin this counterclockwise, you will notice that the push rods on cylinder number one will start to move very soon. Just about now, one of the push rods will start to go up. That is the exhaust push rod and that will push on the valve. Now, when I keep on spinning, it will come back down and then we will have our intake, which activates right here. Our intake will go up and push down onto the valve. Now in this setting right here, we have both push rods going back down and they will be clear from both valves and they will not apply any pressure onto them. As you can see from here all the way to over here, the push rods on cylinder number one have not been activated. So in this position right here, I can technically adjust the valve lash on cylinder number one. Since both push rods are not activating the valves on cylinder number one, we can go ahead and verify that the piston is at top dead center. I'm gonna use this very long pencil, which is around eight millimeters long, and I will insert it into the bore of the cylinder number one injector. Obviously the injectors aren't installed right now because this is a rebuild. Um, but this could also be method number two for you. If you do not know how to figure out the top dead center according to the push rods, you can just verify it with something very long, just like this pencil right here, insert it into the injector bore, and then turn over your flywheel very slowly. And you can also have a look at this pencil, what it does. So I do know piston number one is at top dead center right now, and the pencil is touching the top of the piston. Uh, this mark right here, and according to the push rods, for me, it's understandable. This is top dead center, but I'm just going to share with you how this pencil reacts as I turn over this flywheel. So right now I'm turning it over and this pencil is going down right now. You can see it's already moved about one and a half inches. Now it's about two inches. So now it's all the way down right now. And it's going to slowly start to come back up. Just like that, and especially when you put something into the bore of the piston, you want to make sure that it's not like wood or anything like that because uh, little pieces could fall into the cylinder bore and you obviously do not want that. So right here, I'm coming up to top dead center once again, as long as the pencil stays at the highest point and then it'll fall back down after another rotation of 360 degrees, just like that. Just like that, that right there is top dead center and that is method number two. 
With top dead center verified on cylinder number one, with this pencil right here, I can go ahead and adjust the valve lash according to the service manual, which happens to be eight thousandths of an inch on each intake and exhaust. I have exactly two tools I'll be using and one measuring tool. The first tool is a flathead screwdriver for the adjustment screw. And I also have a 12 millimeter open end wrench that happens to have a box end on the other side. I also have a fuel gauge, which is already set to the desired valve lash that I need for this Yanmar diesel engine. The intake and exhaust will be set to eight thousandths of an inch or 0.203 millimeters. Piston number one is at top dead center and I have to adjust these adjuster screws to make this rocker arm a little bit tighter to the valve itself. For that, I need eight thousandths of an inch between the rocker arm and the top of the valve, just like that. So I will be adjusting this by hand first and then when I come a little bit closer and it seems to be fine, I will grab the flathead screwdriver and the 12 millimeter wrench to tighten this up. Once everything is tightened up the way I like it to eight thousandths of an inch, I have to rotate the engine over 360 degrees just to verify if this gap is still correct. If not, I have to do just some slight tweaking on the adjuster screw and then tighten up the nut once again and then verify it once more. I'm going to grab the 12 millimeter wrench and as I tighten it clockwise, you also want to hold this adjuster screw properly so it doesn't move on you. Just like that. Not too tight, but tight enough. That right there seems pretty good. I'm just going to tighten it up a little bit more. Just like that. That seems really good. Now we'll do the same on the intake. Just like that. I could use a little bit more. That feels pretty good right there. Now to verify this gap, I need to rotate the engine over 360 degrees and I'll double check this. With the flywheel turned over, I'm back to square one. I'll take the fuel gauge and insert it under the exhaust valve. Perfect. And the intake, perfect. Now I just want to double check that the adjuster screws are tight as well as the adjuster nuts. Uh, once everything is tight, I can move on to cylinder number two and three, but I'll do that off camera. So I shared with you guys how to adjust your valve lash on solid valve lifters. And I also shared with you guys two methods, how to figure out top dead center on each piston. I hope you guys can take this advice and apply it onto your engines and hopefully everything goes well. If you guys enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. If you guys are into mechanical components or engines in general, I'll have many more videos in the near future. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your post notifications to see my upcoming videos.